Hi, my name is Andrew Greenfield, and in this two-part video, we're going to show how easy it is to recover from a cyber attack using IBM's safeguarded copy. Now, there's two parts of this video, both of which I wouldn't have been able to do without the great technical brilliance of Brian Sherman and Heminon Gadgel, who helped deeply with all the demo and the slides you're about to see. Now, in this demo, the first part, we're going to show you just the recovery first, and the second part, we'll show you the entire scope. Now, as part of the solution, we're going to be using what's called Copy Services Manager, or CSM for short. Now, this orchestrator will actually be talking with the actual flash system array and helping out with the immutability and the retention of the snapshots, and as well as the recoverability and the restore. Now, here's what the environment looks like, the production on the left, the recover on the right. In the meanwhile, the flash system array is in the center, and CSM is at the top. Now let's show you how quickly and easily we can recover. So by going into CSM, again, I just want to do a quick recover right now. So I will recover from my existing log and data volumes. Notice the snapshots that are immutable that I'm ready to recover to a new server, preserving the forensics for the production server so that we can hopefully find the bad guys. Now that job is running. So within a few seconds, those snapshots are going to be immediately available for me as read write a brand new series of volumes from those immutable snapshots. And now I just need to map that to my new Windows server. So let's do that right now. I'll grab a server. Since it's a new server and a new mapping, I'll have some new SCSI IDs. Now that I'm mapping them, you'll see that on my test server, I've had two new disks that are not online, but watch, let's online them. You'll see that they actually get the volume label from the original production server. Now I'm going to go inside SQL and I'm going to mount that database. First things first, I need to go to my F drive and grab the database volume itself. Now that I have the database volume, I need the actual log volume. So we'll go over to G and grab the log volume. Now that we have the log volume, we'll be able to click OK and actually map this. You'll see that I have a brand new database here. And now let's take a look at the actual tables and rows inside the table and see if it's a valid database. And we can see by the rows, it is a valid database. Everything looks really great. Let's take a deeper dive now into everything we just explored. Now, the key thing we just looked at is immutability and retention and making sure those snapshots are not able to be modified even by an administrator. So what we just looked at right now is taking the snapshots and making sure that they are 100% outside the range of even an administrator or isolated. And those can be scheduled at any particular business time you want. We can have well over 30 policies that match your business needs. So let's log into the array right now and do a deeper dive into what we just saw from the recovery standpoint by actually creating and modifying some of the policies. So the first thing I'm going to do here is you can see our, my production volumes here. And now let's take a look at those production volumes in a slightly different way. So by going over into the pool actions, let me show you how I can actually put them into a safeguarded copy pool. So this is what we call a child pool, but watch what I'm going to do here. So if I wanted to create another safeguarded copy pool, I would just click on this flag. So I create a new child pool and actually have it as a safeguarded copy, which means that administrators cannot modify those contents. They are immutable for those snapshots. And then I'll be using CSM to actually retain and orchestrate those snapshots based on my business policies. Now, inside my child pool, the safeguarded backup pool, here's are those original orchestrated snapshots that have already been done as part of a policy. Now, if you want to see this from a tree view, take a look. Here's my original parent pool and then my safeguarded backup child pool. Notice the icon there. Now, if I want to bring up the properties, it still looks like a normal pool and I can actually see all of those eight immutable snapshots in there. Now, the next thing though is the volume groups. That's what tells the flash system as well as CSM 
the databases or production volumes that we want to protect with a particular policy. So speaking of policies, let's go into those policies. Right now I have this one, which is a copy every week. But if I wanted to change it to every six hours, I can do that. So for example, I can pick a day, I can pick a time here, and it will then retain it for seven days. Now in the GUI, we see just three choices, but you can modify these choices in the CLI if you want as well. So now we've talked about volume groups. I want you to see the slide about it just to make sure you understand that it's part of an overall safeguarded copy policy. But if you want to add more volumes to a particular policy, not a problem. Let me actually show you how easy that is. So by going to add volumes, I can now add any of my other production volumes into this particular policy. And that way they'll be added into the policy for the retention and the snapshots. And all this is done with Copy Services Manager, our orchestration and automation tool. Now, let's go into a deeper dive about this. So CSM allows us to do safeguarded copies as a backup, as well as restore and recover. So I can actually send it back to a original group or a new server, as you just saw in the earlier one. And this is all based on a schedule that CSM has that you define. Now let's go into a little bit more detail of CSM by itself. CSM knows about storage systems. So in this case, it knows about our Flash System 9100. Now we're actually going to explore this a little bit more. You can see that it actually sees the connection, the IP address to that particular Flash System array. And notice very importantly that we are not using an admin credential. We are using a very special credential for CSM itself. This is just for the automation and the orchestration. So again, as another lockdown measure, we are using a non-privileged account to make sure for the orchestration. Now, here's some of those sessions we just talked about. This one we just talked about because it's the policy that we've defined inside our flash system that CSM is now using. It actually sees the copy sets and the policy that we just talked about. You can see when they all expire. You can see how much is in each. You can see how long and when it's going to take the next backup. And if I want to explore a little bit more, I can do that. So for example, we just talked about those two production volumes. I actually can see them here inside CSM as well. Back to our particular CSM. Let's actually take a look now and do a backup of what we just saw. So even though in the first part of the video we did a restore, let me show you how easy it is to take an additional backup using the policy. So right now, notice it looks very similar. We're running a manual backup. Great. So immediately the flash system is taking another immutable series of snapshots of those two volumes and putting them into the safeguarded copy child pool. And the backup has just finished. We can take a look at that. We can see that the backup has indeed finished and we see those results. And now we can actually see as part of what we just did inside the volumes, we actually see those two new immutable snapshots down below. Now here's my target server. You can see that right now I have not mapped anything to it, but I will be shortly very soon. And again, as part of part one, we're going to do a restore to my target server, which is what you see on the slide in front of you. So now, step by step, we'll do the same thing you saw in part one. I'll now recover those brand new items to my test server. Of course, I can pick any one I want here. You can see the job is running. And now you can take a look at the UIDs. I'll actually scroll to find them. They're all the way at the bottom here. So like you saw in the first part here, those are the restores we just kicked off. And now, as you saw in the first part, let's map them. So we're going to pick that server again. There's my two new SCSI IDs. Now that we've mapped them to our new host, let's actually take a look at what's going on. 
So as we can see here, I have my two disks that have not been brought into that new test server. I need to online them. So I'm gonna click online for both. Notice they'll pick up the volume label from the production server, always a good sign. And let's bring it into the actual SQL test server database. So by clicking add, I'm gonna actually go to my F to grab my database first, and then I'll be grabbing the log volume next. And yes, it's found. We just need to tell it where. We need to go to G and show it where its log volume is. Now, you can see the recovered database is right there. And to prove the point again, let's actually take a look at the actual rows inside the database. And we can see they look good. So this shows a manual backup as well as a instantaneous recovery and restore to a test server. So now let's actually dive in a little bit deeper on the flash system. So we're using flash copy mappings and those snapshots. You can actually see the ones we just used here because we're using those volumes from the immutable safeguarded pool. And you can see that right here. So if you want, take a look, I'll bring up both of them and you'll actually see under the properties, the related volumes, that both of them are coming from our immutable safeguarded snapshot pool. And here's the properties of this, just so you can see this. Meanwhile, when we go back to our hosts, we can actually see under volumes by hosts that we actually have those log volumes as well as our production volumes. If you have more questions, by all means, feel free to take a look at any of these red papers and take a look at Jackson Shea's three-site replication one as well. It's very good. Thanks again for watching.